ladies and gentlemen, for being here this evening. Thanks for being patient. So we're going to do a pres we're going to do two types of presentations here. If Elliot, Dr. Faith is going to do from the county a short slideshow, and I've asked the developer and the contractor to kind of come in and do a really nice presentation to kind of show what their projection of this property is going to be. And then afterwards, we're going to take any questions on the property, and you know if we have time, any other questions you may have. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Dr. Faith from Queen Anne's County. Good. Well, greetings and welcome to the Graysonville Community Center. It really is a pleasure to be here out in the community. Uh, I am the Director of Community Affairs with the unique umbrella of tourism, uh, the TV. Thanks, George. we have George and Mike here with us from the TV station. And then we also have public information. So one of the key roles that this department has is to outreach to the community. And when you signed in, one of the things that I asked you to tell me was, how did you find out about this meeting? Because we reached out through all of the avenues that we normally would, um, but it's important that we understand how you want to hear from the county, because we want to be able to share opportunities like this or opportunities for events or uh, public information with you, and we just need to know how to do that. So I really do appreciate your helping me help you uh, through that process. Um, as we indicated before, it's um, going to be a presentation after this as it relates to the project, and Tom Davis with Davis, Moore, and Sharon will be taking the lead on that presentation. Do we have a clicker, or am I clicking? Do we have a clicker, or am I clicking? Oh, cool. All right. Okay, as I mentioned before, we reached out in the ways that we normally would. It's on QAC TV, which is on Atlantic Broadband, Channel 7, or you can see anything that's on QAC TV on the website. You can also pick and choose at that point in time how would you, you would like to or what you would like to view. Um, it's on QAC.org. We put it out through print, which means newspaper and flyers. We also went out on social media through uh, Facebook, Twitter. And then email, if we have your email address and you've provided that with, uh, to us tonight, then we will use that to reach out. We'll use it judiciously as we don't want you to get inundated with emails from the county and then go, please stop. And then we wouldn't know that. So we, will, we do try and use them uh, in a limited way, but especially when we think they're important. We also put it out through a chamber email news flash. Um, they have uh, essentially an email blast that they put out and a lot of people have told us in the past that they do view those, so that was the other way. And then word of mouth, and I think that the community has really risen to the occasion at this point in time and many of you heard about it through word of mouth. If you have any questions, you can call 410-758-4418 or email us at welcome at qac.org. Thank you. Tom? Good evening. My name's Tom Davis, professional engineer with DMS and Associates. My business partner, Kevin Sharon, also a professional engineer. Uh, we have the owner developers here, Neelis Patel, Chris Patel, and Gary Patel. Uh, give you a little bit of background. Uh, the Patel family uh, had owned the Sleep In Hotel, which is immediately adjacent to this uh, development site and uh, sold that recently and are looking to reinvest in the community uh, to develop this restaurant park next door which will be a, uh, what we feel is a very good fit with the hotel and other uses in the area. So we're, we're showing this as a Denny's but there's actually two restaurant pads on the project proposed. Uh, my clients have uh, a letter of intent with a franchisee to develop the Denny's restaurant. The other restaurant pad is uh, unnamed at this time. Uh, the subject site is immediately adjacent uh, to the west of the sleep-in hotel. Uh, Kevin, will flip the next one. It's a triangular-shaped piece of property that has access off of VFW via Panhandle uh, right away. You can see the uh, uh, go back to that. Yeah, you can see the pool and the sleep-in. It's kind of hard to see, but so it's a, basically a triangular-shaped piece of property that was cleared of its woodlands uh, probably 15, 20 years ago. And the only improvements on the property are two large billboards, which uh, would have to be removed as a result of this development. Okay, this is just our conceptual site plan. We have gone through the uh, county process for a conceptual plan approval, and the concept was reviewed and uh, conditionally approved uh, last month, I believe, by the uh, Planning Commission. And uh, this is just the zoning information uh, that's required uh, by the county development review process. A lot of technical data on there that gives you the acreage of the site, which is approximately 3.6 acres, um, parking calculations, and, and so on and so forth. 
Uh, this is an existing conditions plan, again, showing the sleep-in uh, property to the right and the triangular-shaped piece of property uh, to the left there. Again, we're looking at, uh, we're calling this a Denny's project, but it is a restaurant complex uh, that my clients are proposing. Again, Denny's is uh, definitely um, moving forward, and uh, they're working to work out all the logistics with the architect and uh, the franchise about uh, particulars of the site development and the building. Again, this is the sh uh, property. Uh, it's about 3.6 acres. Uh, there's um, basically a little fringe of woodlands around the uh, edge of the property there. Uh, we're trying to preserve that as a buffer and uh, to meet the county uh, requirements uh, for forest protection. Uh, there are some non-tidal wetlands and a drainage ditch that kind of bisects the property from the uh, sleep-in and the VFW property. It's in the brown there. Uh, and it's basically a drainage ditch uh, from uh, Route 50 drainage. There's a small portion of floodplain that comes up from the headwaters of Winchester Creek, and it's a dotted line. Uh, all the new development, as you'll see in a minute, will be outside of that floodplain limits. Uh, the, the resources, the natural resources on the property are very limited, and uh, the conceptual plan that we've developed pretty much meets uh, all the county uh, resource protection standards. The site is also located in what's called the critical areas, and essentially the critical areas is a 1,000 foot uh, distance from the headwaters of uh, Winchester Creek. Uh, the shaded area to the north side of the site and part of the sleeping site are in the critical area. The site is designated as intensely development, which is the most intense land use development uh, designation uh, for critical area properties. So there's no environmental issues uh, with the site with respect to critical areas. This is our land plan uh, that has been reviewed by the county planning and staff. Essentially, the uh, access to the property will be coming through um, the panhandle there between the VFW property and the rear of the sleep-in. Opens up into a parking lot uh, with parking that meets the county code. And then the two restaurant pads are, are shown here in green. The Denny's is the one to the um, east closest to the sleep-in. The other restaurant pad, uh, we don't have a particular user. Our client's intent is to build the project, develop that pad area, have utilities, electric, water, sewer, et cetera, and try to market it to another restaurant user. Um, as ag again, right now, the Denny's is the only um, given uh, for the project. Uh, as part of the development uh, review process in state law, we have to address stormwater management requirements. These uh, green areas show the areas of the stormwater management systems that would be installed in their what's called an environmentally sensitive design. Um, try to mimic the site back into a woodland conditions and um, these will all be designed as part of our site development plans that, as we move forward with the project. Uh, this is a conceptual landscape plan which is also over here on a board. Just showing you the uh, landscape buffering on the property. Uh, landscaping within the parking lot and uh, other uh, shrubbery, etc. This is a picture of the current uh, uh, prototype of the Denny's restaurant that would be proposed here. We're still working with the uh, planning staff on the architectural features of the building, uh, but this is the Denny's new prototype. Um, these are actual pictures of one that's been constructed somewhere down south. Um, Again, this is, uh, we're showing this as Denny's, but it is a, a two-restaurant pad site. Uh, where we are in the development review process, we did obtain conceptual plan approval from the uh, County Planning Commission in January. We're now working through a comprehensive water and sewer plan amendment with the County Commissioners to extend public water to the site, which exists on this side of Route 50. We'll have to extend it all the way to the north side of Route 50. The second plan over here that I have on the board shows the routes of the public water main that we're considering. Uh, we're still in engineering studies with respect to that. Um, we have filed what's called an adequate public facility study, which addresses sewer and water capabilities of existing county facilities and also uh, road and traffic impacts. And right now that that study is in review with the uh, county planning and zoning staff. Uh, we do not see any issues with any of the public facilities to accommodate either of these restaurants, and uh, the intent would be once we uh, 
obtain the approval for the public water extension, then we would move forward with what's called a site plan review process, which is where we develop the design of the on-site utilities, detailed drainage, specifications for construction, landscaping design, and so on. So that's about all I have. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, I believe Faith was going to get a list. Where are you, Faith? Do you have any written? No, the written, the written questions are really just on any subject. Oh, okay. We're going to show the 3D video. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. The county planning staff and uh, GIS staff put together a little, uh, took the information that we provided to them and created a 3D model, uh, which is kind of interesting, kind of shows it from different perspectives of, from Route 50, VFW Road, the access coming in. So it's, it's kind of interesting way above my head. I don't think it has any sound. So this would be a view from overhead of the open field across Route 50 from the site, looking down on the unnamed restaurant and the Denny's uh, to the right corner now, uh, panning around over the wooded area, looking down upon the site, sleeping in the background. There's a shot of Graysonville there on the other side, on the south side of 50. As you're coming around the wooded area there, uh, you can see the uh, rear views of the site. This would be the Denny's there, the brown building on the left, and the unnamed restaurant there coming into view now. And then there's the VFW uh, facility coming into play on the lower part of the screen. And this, is, this would be a view from VFW Road looking in at our access road and then the sleep-in hotel there on the bottom left, parking lot of the sleep-in. Route 50 there coming into the DMS logo. It. So this is a coming into the property, come, turning left off of uh, the VFW Road. That's the trash corral, the back side of the uh, Denny's, kind of panning around there, looking at the uh, landscaping that would be proposed and the screening for the trash corral. You're turning into the parking lot, getting ready to get your cup of coffee right about now. These landscape islands would be uh, installed with bioretention and stormwater systems, similar to the ER syst uh, stormwater systems up here at uh, Nesbit Road. This is going eastbound towards Ocean City or Queenstown, depending on if you're local or from elsewhere. Coming westbound from Queenstown to the site would be on your right. So I, I believe that concludes our presentation uh, for the materials and what have you. So uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions, uh, either the county representatives or myself. Yes, ma'am, Miss Pat. Um, it'll be out on Route 50. Um, Miss, ask where the signage will be. The county code allows freestanding sign and as well as wall signage, they call it. So the signage would be out on the Route 50 corridor. Uh, there's certain limitations on size of the sign. I believe it's 150 square foot. And depending on where the uh, sign is located relative to the right of way, it, it has, it's restricted on height. Uh, each of the uses would be allowed also a wall sign, which is mounted to the fascia of the building. Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, ma'am. I assume so. Those guys right there, the Patels, the developers. There may be some participation by the county, but we're working with the county to potentially obtain some funds. Can I kind of ask, how did we come up with a Denny's? Um, new, you know, it's new. You have an opportunity to get any restaurant that you wanted. How Nobody wants <laughs> They're the only ones that have taken the offer of my client's property at this point. How many parking spaces for the two restaurants? I believe it's about 130. Talk about satellite parking. The sleep-in hotel was originally designed by Mr. Walt Thompson, the previous owner, for a small restaurant pad on the front right. So that parking lot is actually overbuilt for the actual number of rooms at the hotel. So our clients, when they sold the sleep in to the current owners reserved a, a right of way access to utilize some of those spaces there. Furthermore, we think that the two uses will be compatible such that some of the people sleep, uh, staying at the sleep in will not have to drive. They'll be able to walk across a pedestrian link that I forgot to mention. We're going to create a pedestrian link between, between the two sites. So it's most likely some of the people staying at the sleep in would not drive to the um, adjacent parking lot. One more question. Mm -hmm. Currently, and you talked about a lot of parts in the area that you see your approach to the restaurant. The county had. I'm sorry. Where is it contemplated the structure will be parked? We actually um, had designated in the back part of our site uh, a, a larger, wider area for RVs and trucks to park. It's the county addressed that concern, and we've we've allowed for some uh, space on the back of the site. You'd have to come up and take a look at it in detail. Um, I'm, I guess I'm not understanding your question. There's large trucks that will stay at the hotel, mm -hmm. and they park along the side of the FW, and they park on your entrance into it. So where are they going to go? Where are they going to park? I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. Good question. So I have a question that was asked me today. If I'm going to the Denny's and I'm going westbound, we're, we're, how do I get to the Denny's? Is it going to be a pull off, kind of like where the Royal Farms is, or do you have to pull off where the road to go behind sleep in? I mean, uh, Denny's. Sorry, got Royal Farm on my mind. How would I get to the Denny's? If I'm if I'm going if I'm going westbound, yes. If I'm going westbound, I'm already uh, I can make the exit off of VFW Road, come off the off ramp, and turn left into the site. If I'm be an exit on 50 to go to Denny's, you're going to have to go off where the. That's correct. Yeah. 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 If you're going eastbound, I'm not sure how you get there. <laughs> Chester River. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. The ditch in between there and the end of the crossing, how big is that road from the going in there? The access road going in will be at least 24 foot wide that accommodates two-way traffic. Uh, the ditch uh, will be maintained. There's already a culvert crossing across the ditch where that panhandle comes in off of VFW Road. So that existing ditch will be maintained. There's actually a 30 foot right of way between the sleep in property and the VFW uh, uh, property that belongs to this property. If, if you look at that site plan, you can kind of see it. You want us, we'll try to get back up the image that shows that. And again, this is at the conceptual level. We'll be starting to work on our engineering here shortly and addressing some of the concerns uh, that have been talked about as far as drainage. Uh, the county planning office was concerned about large vehicle parking, and we did identify an area back on the uh, north part of the site for trucks to come in and get out of the way. Uh, to answer the question about what happens with the trucks that to sleep in, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess the sleep in uh, owners will have to deal with that. Wait a minute. Oh, man, I got a flurry. Roy? Um, over the course of my 40 year food service career, I dealt with a lot of Denny's, and most of them had a meeting room. 
within them? Does the new concept Denny's have a meeting room available? I do not believe so. I don't think so. Whether Denny's new model has a meeting room in them, and I don't think that they do. The floor plan I saw was just seats. What they call a family room? They have a family room that's, uh, I guess, for large events. Yeah, but but it's not a meeting room. It's not a meeting room. No. Okay. Um, I think if they were coming to this uh, stack meeting. I think it was to be presented, and it was postponed. Was there a reason? <laughs> not that I'm aware of. They were on the agenda at one point, and it was postponed. For the county commissioners or the planning and zoning? Planning. I'm not sure about that. I mean, I, unless it was put on by error by staff and we weren't ready to come and resubmit. How long will it take to do all the engineering? They wanted me to do it in about a month. It's probably going to take, take a two, two to three months. <laughs> the whole process, we're probably another six or seven months of process from now. Yes, sir. What discussions have you had or thought have you given to a bicycle access to the property and bicycle racks at the restaurant? Uh, the planning staff commented on that, and we did identify a path. It's kind of hard to see, but it would be on the uh, south side of the entranceway coming in uh, with paths that lead into the site. And I believe on the detailed plans, we have bike racks uh, for uh, bikers on this site. I know you have to go. So go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Just to clarify where the trucks will enter, will they be doing the same roadway uh, in between the sleep in and the uh, the VFW, or is there another roadway? That you There's only the access panhandle uh, between the sleep in site and the VFW. There won't be sufficient room for those. We're working on the, the design. We'll address turning radiuses, and, and you know, if we need to, we'll put mountable curb out there. And, but the Department of Public Works had already expressed concern, and you know, we got to get into some technical details as we engineer the site. Right now, it's conceptual. Yes, ma'am. What's the proposed completion date for everything built out? April next year. April of next year. If everything works right. Depends on the county. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? This is y'all's opportunity. Please speak up. Yes, sir. Has the VFW uh, made any comment regarding some of the activities they hold and if that would impact one way or another? I have not heard any. From anything from the members of the VFW, we are required by the county code to send out notifications of the project, which we did, uh, but we have not heard from any of those members. Were there any issues when the sleep in was there, since these gentlemen are familiar with it? No. Not that I'm aware of. <clears throat> We've been supporting the VFW for the last 10 years. So. If you want to come up and take a look at the plans, it might be easier to see some of the detail uh, for the color rendering there. That's our colored landscape plan. And then the other drawing on the easel is the actual uh, conceptual routes for the public water extensions to the site. Yes, ma'am. So the target completion date that was mentioned was just for the Denny's and not the The intent would be to build the Denny's and then a majority of the parking lot and then create a pad area. But if in the meantime, as they're going through this process, they secure another franchisee or user, then it would be built concurrently. Is there a mystery about that, or is it just that they haven't? They don't have a, a user. We, we basically pulled the footprint of that building. We pulled off the Internet randomly of a restaurant of around 6,500 square foot and laid our site out. Yes, ma'am. Instead of a restaurant, would they consider doing something recreational? Mm -hmm. 
Based on my experience doing engineering in the county, there's the, the demand for those is, is, can't be supported by the county population, based on what I hear. I've been doing this engineering for 30 years, and a bowling alley was considered on Thompson Creek Shopping Center, and it's never happened, so. You got any money? <laughs> Sounds like you got a buyer there, Gary. Movie theater. That'd be nice. Sites too small. Well, we scrap the Denny's and start over then. Any particular questions about the Denny's? Or the restaurant. That looks like at the 3.6 acres. How many is going to be now covered with um, the parking lot? The county code allows 80 percent coverage, and I think we're probably 10 to 15 percent below that right now. So what would it say? 2.5 acres. I don't know. I don't have much. I can't do math in my head. I need a calculator. Two and a half acres. Yeah, I, it's on one of these plans. I could pull out and. Well, how close is it up? So I can't tell my the plans. Is it to that? Seasonal community behind them, served by that creek. Uh, no, that's way down. Is it way down? Okay. There's no community nearby. The the area to the immediate left of the triangle is totally wooded. You got the VFW. You can see the concrete parking lot, the pavilion, and the uh, actual VFW post, and then the uh, sleep in and its parking lot. So, pretty much all the development will be adjacent to either the institutional use of the VFW or the uh, the sleep in. Will the sleep in stay as it is, or are there any plans to change that pad at all? No. <clears throat> Good job. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So no more questions pertaining to the Denny's project for their for the county, perhaps? Any other issues? Yes, ma'am. Um, this has, my question is about the liquor laws. Your question is about the liquor laws? Liquor laws. Okay. Is there something that is keeping us from having a chain restaurant in this area that serves liquor? Absolutely. I have a gentleman that I'd like to come up and speak to that man. Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. This gets brought up constantly. She, she's asked me a question about liquor laws and whether restaurants, you know, who's qualified for them in the county. There's a lot of debate on whether it's an owner or you have to have a lawyer hold the license. So I'm going to let this gentleman respond to that. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jeff Thompson. I'm with Thompson and Richard, and I've been the county's liquor board attorney for, I don't know, 30 years, around as long as Mr. Davis, I believe. Um, and the question is just relative to who can obtain a liquor license. Relative to is is there something that is keeping this area from having chain restaurant that serves liquor in this in, in this area? Okay. Could it be in Easton or Annapolis? No. Good. Yeah. Good. Good question. Um, liquor licenses aren't so much site specific or site design specific as they are applicant specific. So in Queen Anne's County. Um, a restaurant license is classified as a class B license and then you have a class B beer, a class B beer and wine, and a class B beer, wine, and liquor. To obtain a, obtain a class B license in Queen Anne's County, if you're an individual, you must have been a resident of Queen Anne's County for a two-year period and at least one of those applicants needs to be a registered voter. If um, you're coming in as a corporate license holder, LLC, or a corporate license holder, you don't have to be a resident of the state of Maryland but three of the officers have to be applicants if there are three officers. If there are less than three officers, it can be a few as one, that one person has to be a resident of the state of Maryland and own at least 15% of the outstanding shares of stock in the company. So the problem with a national chain is very difficult to find a national chain where you would have an officer be a resident of the state of Maryland and the owner of 15% of the outstanding shares of stock. That's, that's the dilemma for your national chain. 
what, what? I'm not a politician. I'm just <laughs> so if if however, let's just say if however, the restaurant that is sought to locate there is um, a franchise, then you could very easily have a resident of the state of Maryland, a resident of Queen Anne's County you know, be an officer and own the 15%. So the issue really becomes the ownership of the actual restaurant itself. Is it a franchise where you could actually have, you know, Thompson LLC own it and therefore I could be the, the actual applicant and I could own those number of shares? Or is it truly a national chain where it's company owned? It's the company owned that's gonna- Tuesdays, you know, th things like that don't know enough about those companies to know whether they're franchised or not. So again, if, if I'm sure you can look, if it's a company that sells franchises, then yes, a local owner could obtain a, ch a franchise and get a liquor license. Yes, ma'am. Are you also saying that Queen Anne County, though, has different laws in that regard to the ownership and residents? It's so, it's so selective. Every single county, there's a general rule and then pretty much every county has its only own nuances. Every single county is different. Um, special interest groups over the last whatever number of years have carved out what they felt they needed. And yet, but yes, your question over the 15% ownership, Queen Anne's County. It's a special provision for Queen Anne's County. Other counties might have greater ownership, lesser ownership, no, none, but you have to look up each individual one. So in order to change that, it would be a it would be a it would be a legislative change, yes. And our delegation typically would have uh, me draft up something, present it to the local liquor board. The liquor board would have a public hearing, but everyone would have the opportunity to be heard on the point. Um, our liquor board would make a recommendation to the county commissioners. They too then would have a hearing, you know, to fully vet the issue. And only after those two hearings would the delegation, you know, accept, I guess, a recommendation to make a change. That's, that's, we, and we, it's, it's done every year. We, we, if, if someone wants to propose it, be more than happy to present it to the liquor board and, and start that process. But it ends with your delegation. It ends with your local, your local delegates and your senator. Any other questions on liquor, beer? Thanks for the question. I feel like it came for a reason. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
they own a, right now currently they own about maybe 25 dennies and they're developing a bunch of them and they have incentive to develop more around the Maryland area <clears throat> and this site he likes very much because he grew up here the general manager who, who runs the dennies for the owner he's from Graysonville originally so he likes this area We've talked to so many people regarding restaurants. We've approached every single restaurant. They just feel there's not enough heads in, in Graysonville to sustain year-round business. We've run the hotel for 10 years. We know that. In the wintertime, it is tough to make, pay the bills. The restaurants feel the same way too. But if you look at what's happening at the Cracker Barrel, happening, what's happening in Easton, everybody from Graysonville is filling all those restaurants in, in Eastern. Mm -hmm. Try getting in, in Chick-fil-A or any other restaurants on, on 50 up there, and you'll be waiting an hour most of the time. Mm -hmm. Why? Why not have something in Graysonville? That's right. No That's exactly right. Cracker Barrel is the number one Cracker Barrel in the United States. I mean, that's amazing. You know, this Denny's could be potentially be the number one, you know, potentially has that option to do that. And uh, so it's good. It's good. I think it's going to be a great project for the community. Yes, ma'am. I probably should have asked Tommy this, but will the facade be typical of Denny's, or will the county be requiring modifications? I would, I would assume. I don't know. That might be a question for him. Um, Mike, you want to answer this? Sure. Please. Hi, folks. My name is Mike Wisnowski, and I'm the Director of Planning and Zoning for Queen Anne's County. <coughs> to answer that specific question, uh, Mr. Davis uh, did submit the, uh, the new corporate model for Denny's. We've had discussions with him. We want him to uh, take uh, our comments, uh, which were to make it a bit more uh, localized. You know, uh, the Eastern Shore communities, uh, Queen Anne's County, there's a lot of brick. There's a lot of clapboard siding. There's a lot of material that's more conducive to what we're all uh, used to. Uh, so we've asked uh, Tom to uh, contact the architect to sit down and meet with us. It's a process. We're just beginning that process now. But uh, yes, to answer the question, we are looking at different architectural alternatives. Great. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? No? Yes, sir. Sure, shoot, go ahead. All right, number one, if you're on 18 around the post office, you look like a great there sometimes. If you're on 18. Okay. Another thing is cats, 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 and more damn cats. <laughs> Pharaoh cats. <laughs> right, yes, sir. This is the previous example. got, I had. Props being around my house. They're not mine. I understand. I'll tell you what I'll do after this meeting. I do not want to kill no, Absolutely. Please don't. But after this meeting, I'll, I'll take the time to talk to you and tell you what I think we can do. How's that? Thanks. Did you have? You. Yes, sir. Well, I was talking about the ditch. The ditches in Graysonville need digging out again. Okay. Especially the big ditch. Right. That's the one by. Sorry. You go into the. Um, Kind of name for that ditch, but they hit a Winchester Okay, that used to be an old tax ditch, but go ahead. That needs to be dug out. Okay, I'm taking notes. I have somebody in the audience doing this, and I'll I'll look into that. Absolutely. Actually, that last point on uh, ditches, mm -hmm. uh, drainage ditches along the side of the road, that continues on down into uh, into Chester on Route 18. Mm -hmm. Right. They behind the uh, Kent Town Shopping Center. That backs up often, and you get a huge puddle out into Route 18. Then when you go around the curve by Postal Road, uh, the state is not cleaning out those ditches and not putting, leaving a lot of water on the road every time you get a heavy rain. Okay. So how does the county push the button at the State Highway Administration to make sure that they do some, take a look at that and do something about it? That's a good question, and I tell you what, as soon as I find out the answer, I'll get back to you with that. I will give you my two cents on that, because I'm on Dominion in 18, and because one road is county and the other road is state, they both pass the buck. Right. And so I just became such an annoyance to them, saying someone has to take ownership, because what happened is they did a new home, they cut through the pipe, 
um, and didn't and then didn't put it back together. So there was no place for the for the drain off to go. But both were blaming the other one. And I finally got um, state to come out and take care of on, on 552. But it really just took you know someone has to take okay. a picture because I took pictures and I just right. Well, what I'll do is uh, <clears throat> Anne's taking notes today, and I'll go back to uh, Greg Todd tomorrow also about what you had talked about. So I'll get some responses, and you know, after the meeting, I'll get your card, get your number, and then I'll, I'll let you know. How's that? Anybody else? Any free for all questions you want to ask? Anything about the county? Then, other than that, I'm going to say thank you for joining us this evening, and. Um, Yes. The other places, maybe that ours and Mary Cantina, we lost that wonderfully um, nice restaurant that was county friendly and kid friendly um, to the second McDonald's that was right. for the tourists. Um, maybe ours and Mary Cantina. Maybe so. My next town hall meeting is going to be in May, and it's going to be about the. Um, uh, the prime outlets, Jamal property. Uh, that's a property I've been working with him for the last, I want to say, year, myself and Mike, since he's been on board. I just spoke with him last week, and, uh, you know, we're going to, he's going to ramp this thing up again. So I want to do a, I'm going to give him a couple of months to put together a really nice presentation on what the proposal is for the, uh, the prime outlets. I mean, that has the potential to be one of the biggest redevelopment projects the county's seen. And, you know, they're talking about movie theaters and different type of stuff. So we'll, we'll, give you plenty of notice faith we'll get it out to people and uh we'll go from there but other than that i want to thank you for coming out this evening to talk about the denny's project if you have any questions or concerns call me and uh, i'll get back to you thank you